So for this screencast, I'm going to do a couple of different windows here. I want to give you a mock presentation. So up top here, this is the description of the assignment. And down below here is the same variable I used when describing how to generate your table. So in the assignment, make sure to pay attention to the uh, not just the things I want you to talk about, but the ordering. So I ask you here to discuss the following topics in this order. So first, introduction to your research then results of two published articles, then the results of your data, then you bring in some appropriate theory. Uh, it needs to be social, psychological in nature. I remember one time I had a student wanted to bring, who wanted to bring a biological theory in to explain his research. And although there's some great theories in other disciplines, this is a social psychological class, so the theories you use need to be social psychological in nature. So uh, any of the theories we, we've discussed in class, in our text, other sociology, psychology classes, all you're doing in this last section is to try and explain why you found what you found. So that, that's what the, the theory does. So, okay, let's uh, go through this together, make sure I have everything here. So you, you have your introductory slide, just what your topic is and, and your name there. So this one here, introduction to your research. <clears throat> Why? Why is a study of whatever you're talking about important? So why is a study of smoking important? That's my variable. I'm using the variable smoking. And so I talk about how there's an increased risk of, of premature death or other diseases related to it. Note that uh, I will not, uh, in this example, read word for word what you see here on the screen. And I, I expect you to do the same. Don't just read word for word what you have up on the slides, but talk about what you have on the slides. Okay, uh, that's something I think is important to know in presentations. It's important not to just read the stuff on the slides because otherwise, if all you can do is read to us, why not just give us the handout and then let us go home? So put the stuff on the slides, talk, but, but talk about it. Okay, so that I talk about why smoking is important because the, of health risks, premature death, things like that. So that's A. Again, so do. I, I really don't care if, if you put all the introduction stuff in your first slide. You can have these first two slides separate as I do, or you can have everything, your, your, your title, your name, and this information here on one slide. That's fine. Don't mind that. But this comes first. Then next, B, the results for two published, published articles. So here's one, here's another. Here are my two different slides here. So what I have here is, again, this is the stuff that I would talk about. And down here, you need to make sure you have the full um, citation, the author's name, year of publication. Let, let me uh, let me get this a little bigger so you can see it better for a sec. So again, you have um, information down here, the bibliograph bibliographical information, and then you, you just you talk. Again, you went read word for word, but you talk about how, as we're, as we're looking at the slide, you're telling us about how there's an increased risk of premature death for people who smoke regularly. There's other health risks, including heart disease, emphysema, things like that. Here you talk about how for adults who start smoking as teenagers, here are the associated health risks with that. And so again, you'll talk about what you write. So we're both at the same time hearing what you say and then seeing what you wrote. Okay, so let me uh, put that back down. So that's, those are your next two slides, results of your data. Then, I'm sorry, that's B, the results of your published articles. Next results of your data. So for me, Let's go down here. So all I did is just copy and paste the table from the uh, website I showed you into my slideshow here. And so remember, make sure you talk about general trends and specific trends. General trends are regardless of sex, what's going on. You find that information right here and right here. These two figures are where you find that information. So I'd say about a third of the people say they do smoke, about two thirds do not smoke. That's my general trend, my specific comparison. In this case, I'm comparing men to women. I would say about 40% of men say they smoke and about 30% of women say they smoke. And there you go. So that's it for my results. When you get to, let me go down here. When you get to this appropriate theory, um, now I'm looking at men and women. You'll look at sex, you'll look at race, or you look at social class. So all the, if you notice here, I'm talking about men and women in this first slide. That's my title, of course. One of my articles dealt with men and women. One did not. As, as long as you can find articles that deal with the specific topic you're looking at, even if they don't compare your two groups, that's okay. One Again, one article did talk about men versus women. One did not. That's fine. Um, 
when you go down here and talk about your theory, let me bring this back up here. Oops. So you would just talk about what the theory is. So here briefly explains it. And then down here, this is uh, applying the theory. So I talk about how people are, are, are more likely to, it seems, uh, take a risk about health. And so what I would also talk about is because I'm seeing more men here than women smoke. But I would talk about here, even though I've not written it, written it, I would still talk about how it looks like men are more likely to risk future health because of maybe dealing with stress or pressure, maybe because of, of peer pressure, maybe because of wanting to fit in or whatever it is. Men apparently are more likely than, than women to, who, uh, to be willing to take certain risks that down the road could affect their health. That's all I'd say. Now, if you notice, you go back up here. Let's see. Well, I'm sorry. So if you scroll down a bit, here's how I'm going to grade you. I will time you three to four minutes. Not very long, but you will be timed. So do time yourself beforehand. In fact, I'd say when you time yourself, be closer to four minutes than three because inevitably when people get nervous, they sometimes talk more quickly or don't go quite as long. So I'd say be around four minutes if you can. How much over can you go? Well, it depends how many people we have present each day. I'd say stick to no more than four. Then I'm going to also grade you on the results, your general trends, your group comparisons, as I mentioned earlier, stuff like this. Uh, don't be umming and eyeing and don't be getting up there and fumbling through notes. Make sure you know the material very well, very thoroughly. I'll be in the back of the room so I can hear you. Make sure you speak loudly. Look for your eye contact, things like that. Well dressed, just dress however you feel comfortable dressing. That's fine. And again, make sure you don't just read the slides word for word. In correct order, have your slides here, as I have already explained. And then make sure you turn the information in on time. So regardless of when you present, it's Thursday the 5th by 11.59 p.m. If you don't, turn it in on time. Uh, look what happens. I'll, I'll, it's a big deduction. I'm giving you a lot of warnings, so make sure you turn things in on time. So um, continue to let me know if you have any questions about the assignment or uh, putting slides together, anything along those lines. But I, I will be using the last slide you turned in on time as the slide uh, show you use in class.